Today we're going to make this coffee table out of mahogany. This whole table is made from just two boards, one 8 foot long 11.5 inch wide mahogany board and one 8 foot long 5.5 inch wide poplar board. Both boards were 3 quarters of an inch thick. The first thing I did was cut the mahogany board in half by making a mark at 4 feet and cutting it with a circular saw. I set my table saw to four and three quarters of an inch and ran each board through twice to give me a total of four boards that were four feet long and four and three quarters of an inch wide. I then jointed the sides and one face of each board on a jointer. If you don't have a jointer, that's fine. Just make sure that the wood you buy comes what they call S4S or surfaced on four sides. I then ran each board through a planer with the jointed side down. This step is also optional, but reduces the amount of sanding that needs to be done later. Here I'm using a straight edge to make reference lines for my biscuit joiner. And this is yet another optional step, but it makes the glue up go much smoother by keeping everything nice and lined up. Here I'm cutting the slots for the biscuits and then placing them in the appropriate side of each board before doing a dry fit to make sure that everything lines up. It was looking like everything was fitting together uh, the way I wanted it to, so it was time to move on to the actual glue up. I'm using Type Bond 2 glue and four parallel clamps for the glue up, and then I let the glue cure for 24 hours. After removing the clamps, I used a straight edge and a circular saw to get a nice even cut on each end of the tabletop. I used a card scraper to clean up the glue lines, then used an orbital sander to sand with 80, then 150, then 220, and finally 320 grit sandpaper. At this point I got started on the legs by ripping the poplar board down to two strips that were each one and three quarters of an inch wide. I made each cut for the legs at four degrees on the miter saw to give them a trapezoidal shape. The top leg is 18 inches wide so that it sits flush with the tabletop and then each side is 14 inches long. I waited until a little later to cut the bottom piece so that I could partially assemble all the other pieces and then measure for an exact fit. So at this point I had two pieces that were 18 inches long and the four legs that were each 14 inches long, all with four degree miters. 
To drill the holes to attach the legs to the top, I used a 3 8 inch Forstner bit to cut almost all the way through the top piece of each leg. Then I flipped each piece over and drilled about halfway through with a 7 8 inch Forstner bit. And this prevented me from having to try to center the bit on a hole that was already drilled out. The reason I'm drilling the holes oversized like this is because I'm attaching the legs directly to the tabletop. To account for expansion and contraction of the wood, I'm going to attach the legs with screws and washers that will have room to move around inside these holes and that will prevent the wood from cracking over time. To assemble the legs, I'm using glue and then brad nails to keep pressure applied as the glue sets. After I had the tops and sides of the legs assembled, I measured and cut the bottom pieces to the correct length and assembled them in the same way. I sanded the legs just like I sanded the top of the table with a random orbital sander. To finish the table top, I applied dark walnut danish oil and just kept applying it until it stopped soaking into the wood. I wanted the legs of the table to be black, so I used India ink made by a company called Speedball. I like to use India ink to blacken wood because you can still slightly see the grain of the wood through it, so it doesn't look like it's painted, but just stained jet black. Here I'm making sure the leg has a 4 inch offset from the side of the table, then using the 3 8 inch Forstner bit from before to mark the center of each hole as a reference to pre-drill into the bottom of the table. I wrapped some painter's tape around the drill bit to prevent drilling all the way through the table. Here's the assembly for the fasteners. The screw will have plenty of room to move inside the 3 8 inch hole, and the washers will have plenty of room to move inside the 7 8 inch hole, but the legs will still be securely attached to the table. And that's it. All there's left to do is flip it over. Thanks for watching guys, give me a favor and if you like this video, hit the like button down below and let me know that you want to see more content like this by hitting that subscribe button. If you want more frequent updates on what I'm working on, follow me on Instagram. Thanks guys.